in terms of sales. So um, just to give you an example of some of the deployment architectures, the sort of the networking connections, how uh, typical networks are being put together, you have on the back end, um, basically at the corner where the tower is, uh, or that on top of that building, is the Tsunami QB8100, right? And uh, this particular product uh, is being connected to one of the streets that has one of the cameras, and the deployment is essentially a daisy chain of being able to hook up each of these intersections via just the point-to-point -point product, uh, uh, wireless product radios that we have. And so if, if all you're doing is basically taking um, uh, one location, connecting a couple of intersections together, you can do that uh, with the QB8100 pretty effectively and pretty quickly. It's, it's relatively quick to... Um, uh, put some of these products together. And if you're interested in learning more about the sort of products and product portfolio, I recommend you um, listen in on one of the pre-recorded sort of uh, webcasts that we've run in the past. Uh, we did a products and product portfolio uh, earlier in the year uh, that you can listen into that it has updated basically um, the product portfolio presentation. And you can go through and find out more about this specific, these specific products. But this is uh, an example. And the presentation, by the way, will be sort of uploaded to the extranet um, and it's also distributable um, via Moonblink, so you can get a copy of the presentation um, to review uh, later on. Um, another type of deployment uh, would be instead of utilizing sort of a point-to-point -point, um, backhaul link, to connect various different um, intersections together. Uh, you could also deploy one of our base stations. The base station basically has, you know, uh, and depending on the antenna that you put on or the integrated antenna that we provide, which uh, covers a 90 degree sector, uh, you can cover basically a certain area. And then that particular area can uh, be used to distribute and connect uh, subscriber units that would, all of which would be pointed at one direction where the base station is, and then they basically talk back to the base station. So this is another type of deployment uh, network architecture that could be investigated. So, um, you know, uh, depending on how uh, the topology is, uh, what that uh, network and the locations that you have to hook up uh, uh, need to be, uh, we have options uh, within the product set uh, for you to do that in different ways. Requirements in large uh, large installations, and so in large installations, and this is you know pretty. Uh, this is one of the reference points that uh, we cite for uh, a deployments as large as sort of the LA County release is that you know any inner city traffic signal coordination is very important. County to city high speed backbone for traffic and video transport, the city use of wireless networks to provide uh, public safety wireless in, uh, intranets, um, as well as vi uh, video detection, real-time license plate processing for warrants and wants. And th there are a number of things that once the city deploys a network, they want to be able to accomplish. Uh, and, and some of these are, are, are listed on this slide. Um, the things that you want to consider when you're talking about you know, wireless, uh, these are city uh, locations. There should be, you know, fiber running all throughout the city, but yet uh, fiber costs, you know, 10x basically what a wireless deployment would typically cost. And this is why wireless is used as a, almost a de facto technology uh, for uh, sort of ITS applications, sort of video surveillance applications. Wireless is really the sort of de facto technology that many uh, counties and uh, many enterprises and many government entities have, have, have learned and, and have adopted. Uh, all equipment needs better than 100 millisecond latency, uh, allows one second polling access to each signal. That means that you know, wherever the central management center is, or the trans, uh, central traffic monitoring station is, they need to be able to ping a signal, a poll, a particular traffic-like signal with a latency turnaround time of basically one second. So latency ends up being a very important factor. Latency ends up being um, one of the differentiators uh, of you know technologies that uh, Proxim has adopted versus you know techno technologies that we may also have, but yet other competitors have uh, that don't necessarily work. And so, um, in a 
citywide network deployment, this is an example of a larger scale uh, network with many, many different intersections. And, and you'll note that within this type of installation, the proper setup and the proper arrangement of where your base stations are, where your client or SU devices are, um, uh, it is very important for how the network actually operates. Um, it's a very detailed uh, sort of site survey deployment. It's not a network that you could casually put together without doing a, a, a large amount of, of research. And it's also a network that would not be possible um, in, in, in many cases uh, without utilizing the sort of uh, point to multi point technology that uh, we offer within our product set. And so, uh, this is something that uh, we have learned um, not only through our own examples, but of also customers. Uh, coming to us, experimenting with different technologies, and coming to us and telling us uh, about these results, uh, which is that you know in large installs, wireless technology is not the same um, for, uh, from vendor to vendor to vendor, right? Um, there is the type of wireless technology or wireless uh, equipment that you use at home. There is the type of wireless equipment that you may use in small deployments. And then there's the different types of wireless technology that you need to use in larger, more, ro ro uh, more large, more, uh, more robust installations. And so what we found is that although um, whether it's our own sort of wireless APs or outdoor Wi-Fi equipment, whether it's our own or whether it's our, our competitors, uh, these really are very good at small installs, right? So in small networks, they're relatively easy to easier to deploy because they're utilizing usually omni antennas, uh, and so that just means that uh, you know the radiated signal, as long as you place them in closer proximity, they're pretty easy to be able to talk to each other. You don't really have to go through a, a much larger sort of site survey and deployment scenario study uh, in order to get a network up and running. Um, so in small networks, okay. Um, and because in small networks, latency is less of a factor because you'll have fewer hops between you know, where the data needs, uh, originates and then where the data needs to go, um, uh, performance is an F factor as well, right? But in large deployments, such as the one that we're talking about with LA County, it ends up being impossible to deploy sort of Wi-Fi or these sort of standard wireless equipment uh, in, in that scale. Uh, for the applications that you have, especially when you know um, latency and sort of that polling, that one second turnaround to be able to poll each traffic signal throughout the sort of you know 4,000 square miles of the county covering 37 uh, different cities and covering a population of 10 million folks, uh, 10 million people, that you know any standard wireless equipment is going to be able to do that, and that's not the case, and, and certainly we've learned that. As well, and so you know, deployments uh, with the Tsunami MP product line, uh, the 8100, the 50, uh, the MP11, 5054s, um, any of the sort of newer generation uh, Tsunami uh, MP products that uh, we offer at Proxim, really is a, a sort of differentiator in these larger deployments, and it very often uh, relates to sort of the latency requirements or uh, that are injected. In, uh, using standard wireless uh, Wi-Fi equipment that can be used in the homes or maybe smaller outdoor deployments, but that really never can't, that can't scale in very large installs. And so performance, is, uh, performance matters, and in very important uh, installs, you want to make sure that you select the right wireless technology and the, quite r the right vendors. And so, um, on to sort of product portfolio details, and there's a much better and more detailed presentation that we've done via the webcast that I alluded to previously that talks in more detail about the products that we have at Proxim um, and the products that uh, uh, Moomly carries and, and, and has uh, done a terrific job in, um, in helping us uh, promote to um, their customer base. And so this is just sort of an identification of some of the categories of products that we, we carry. So on the left side, we have the point to multi-point uh, products. Uh, on the, uh, in the middle, we've got uh, some point to point products. 
Uh, and then on the right side, we have a wireless LAN, our wireless equipment, a wireless LAN equipment uh, that goes from indoor to outdoor. And so this is just a, uh, a snapshot of some of the products that we have. If you need more information, either go to the Proxim.com website for more information uh, or listen in on one of our uh, previously recorded webcasts that uh, we have on our partner extranet. If you don't actually have a, um, uh, a partner um, extranet uh, login account, um, certainly go ahead and we'll, we'll have a link at the end of the uh, presentation for where you go and sign up. So wireless network, uh, 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 sort of wireless video network options. Um, you know, th th this again is one, uh, an install um, option that uh, you can uh, put together, and it is a um, install or a, a bit of a deployment uh, network deployment uh, structure that utilizes a couple of different types of products uh, within the product set, and so. Um, if you look on the uh, sort of far left side on this end, um, you'll notice that basically we have some high definition cameras. High definition cameras require more capacity. You're going to want to uh, look at some of our MP8150 SUAs uh, to provide you with the additional capacity and uh, potentially the uh, sort of long range because you, you, you require uh, the distance or the location of where these cameras need to be placed is relatively far from where the base station is uh, in the middle of this presentation here. And so uh, you need to deploy essentially a, a customized sort of antenna solution. Maybe it's a two-dish, four-foot dish uh, sort of antenna. Uh, that's probably pretty unsightly. <laughs> for a video surveillance camera deployment. But, you know, the distances are relatively long, and so you really need to think about antenna types. And so we have configurations where we have a connectorized variant of our subscriber unit that allows you to connect any type of antenna that you wish uh, to uh, the radio itself. Um, if you're talking about a more standard uh, sort of deployment where the distances are maybe your, your standard three to two, two miles, uh, three miles, uh, maybe even up to five miles, uh, you can take one of our standard integrated uh, subscriber units uh, with an integrated antenna, uh, have that connected to a standard definition camera, and then connect it back to the base station. One of the things that you'll, you'll want to know for sort of video camera specific installs is that we have a, a PoE out port on our radios. Uh, this particular port actually powers cameras, and so as opposed to pulling two cables uh, up to the camera, uh, up to wherever the location of the camera needs to be, one to power the radio itself, the networking equipment, and then one to power essentially the camera. Uh, we're able to actually power cameras that you know that are uh, that are within a certain power budget requirement, of course. Uh, uh, but we're able to actually power a camera directly from the radio itself, and so it's just one less thing that the installer has to worry about, and uh, and it speeds the install along, and so that that helps out. In smaller deployments um, and lower end uh, sort of uh, smaller sites, uh, we've got uh, different types of subscribers or CPEs that could also be used uh, there. Um, in the middle here is basically from building to building, you've got a, a unlicensed uh, f uh, either 4.9 to 6 gigahertz uh, point to point link, um, uh, 100 megabits. Uh, in some cases, if the distances are, uh, are shorter, and the frequency channels, uh, the the amount of frequency available is there. We can even we can even go up to 200 megabits in terms of the point to point links that we have for this particular product line. And then from this particular building uh, back into some sort of a control center, uh, there's a license link. And so we have different products uh, that provide you with either uh, support for an unlicensed frequency or a licensed frequency in the wireless space. I mean, that's, that's key for wireless uh, technology, right? So whether you're picking an unlicensed frequency or you can work with unlicensed frequencies or if you need licensed uh, frequencies, uh, you know, it depends on your deployment. And if you have questions about that, certainly either, um, you know, ask some questions or, you know, we can certainly have our sales representatives or, or one, uh, one of our um, SE members to actually uh, get, uh, get back in touch with you if you have some particular uh, projects that you guys are working on that would require some assistance or some uh, consulting from our side to, to understand whether our company's products would be a good fit.